You know, having that cancer to me is one of the most devastating cancers because many times it's the one cancer you can't hide. And we live in a world where we are just to a certain extent by our parents. And so for the patient, it's very difficult emotionally and psychologically addressing their disfigurement. But then they have to address, well, my medical insurance doesn't cover it. They're known as the forgotten patient. And to a certain extent, they're still forgotten even today. Although we have made drastic advances in the technology, most certainly dental implants have helped us, the 3D planning has helped us, but the issue with respect to getting it recovered under medical is the frustrating part. My first diagnosis was like 22 years ago, 1996. It was a um, chondrosarcoma in the left maxillary sinus. It was quite large at the time. Nine years later, I had a recurrence. Through Dr. Day, I had the surgery with Dr. Day, and Dr. Davis was a part of that surgical team. It was a removal of the palate, and then this false palate obturator was designed. We did the impression, and then we had it fabricated, so it is inserted at the time of surgery, and we made certain that she had teeth because she was going to her son's wedding with an immediate surgical obturator in place, yeah. but she made it. I did, I did. With prosthetics, we can make an artificial eye, an artificial nose, artificial ear, an artificial palate in the lab with 3D printing, rapid prototyping, and make it look exactly like the other half of their face or their body. So this is an orbital prosthesis. This is an ear. And this is an, another ear. This is a partial nasal prosthesis. This is a patient who lost his ear because of cancer, and this is a 3D model. We will convert that to wax. So it has shortened the process tremendously for the patients because it's not only our time, it's also the patient's time because they are out of work, and it helps us fabricate them much quicker. It's not just about curing the cancer. You're treating a patient. And so you've got to think, okay, what's the patient going to be like afterwards? You want them to have a long, happy, and healthy life that they can enjoy after their cancer is treated. Without my obturator in my mouth, I can't really form proper sounds. So it's totally life-altering and changing in every way. I mean, it's just an invaluable gift to me to have this mouthpiece and be able to eat and drink and speak and sing. I can't whistle, but... That's, that's just one small little thing that I can't do, but um, it's a tremendous blessing, tremendous.